from Ryan. Do you guys like installing inverter systems or what's your thoughts on them? I know some contractors avoid it. Well, we, we were going to talk about Grief Flex. I don't know if we have enough time to, but you can answer this question by talking a little bit about it, I guess. Well, I like the technology. I think it's every time I get around one of them, I want to learn everything about it that I can. And there's a bunch of different ones out there. Everything from train to Gree to Mitsubishi and all of them. It seems like you got to take a class on to be comfortable working on them. But um, I, I like the technology. I've got one on my house and um, it has just been fantastic for us. I love it. Now, what do you like about it? Just so customizable? Um, well, the, the Grief Flex is not necessarily customizable. It um, it works off a 24-volt signal just like a, a regular thermostat can work on this. And it, it gets a single-stage call for like a heat pump. And then it decides when to ramp up and ramp down. Oh, I got you. So, but, but does, it does communicate between air handler and outdoor unit? Nope. Really? So it's like a, a simple communication and the brain is outside? All the brains outside. It, it judges ramping up by runtime, superheat, subcool, temperatures. It calculates all those and, and ramps up and tries to keep a certain superheat and subcool. If I, that sounds very Bosch like almost because well, it's doing put, everything outside. The Green Flex, you can put any air handler on it that has a TXB. Okay, so it's very similar. In fact, see, everything's outside, it's just taking the measurements or line temperatures and superheat subcooling, like you're saying, and it's doing everything from outside based on what's coming back. It's yeah. interesting. Okay. I wonder which one would do better. Just to put it plainly, I wonder which one of them is better. But we you really on. enjoy it, though, huh? I do enjoy – I haven't had to work on a whole lot of them yet, but I enjoy learning about them. And this um, Craig Migliaccio has got this new book about the inverter mini splits, and I've read almost every word of it. I mean, he does, he's got some really good books. Um, I wish sometimes he would go into more detail about the technical stuff, but – uh yeah, I enjoy learning about it and and getting my hands on them. Yes, that that puts you ahead of the game. I know that. Uh, I remember watching some of Craig's videos and he was going over EEVs and stuff and how they work and how you test them and everything. It was very interesting. And as soon as the shroud comes off of it, it's a lot less intimidating. So that's definitely a good thing. It's good you read all those books and stuff. We were just talking about Craig last week or two weeks ago, actually. Um, let's go ahead and hit another. Do you have anything else to say on the flex? Um, they're very easy to install. It's, um, Nylog is your best friend when you're installing some of that stuff. Oh, I forgot about that. I remember watching that. All right, explain what that means. Um, you got to put Nylog on the inside of your flare. And because you're, you're flaring like three quarters and three eighths. And if you don't have the nylog on there, it's hard for it to make a good seal. I mean, you can have a perfect flare and it still might leak. And this is with a torque wrench? With the torque wrench, torquing it down the specs. Um, yeah, the first one I installed, I didn't use nylog to begin with. And it would not hold a vacuum. So I pressurized with nitrogen and I had leaks all over the place at my flares. So I remade all my flares so that they would be as pristine and clean as possible. And I still had leaks. I put nylog on it and put them back together. Leaks were gone. Do you put oil on flares? Like before that point, did you put like any kind of oil on the flares at all? No, I just tried to make sure they were super clean. Right. A bunch of burrs and everything shooting off of them. Yeah, I've seen some of the flares that I've made and look down there and say, that ain't it. Or even just like um, a, if a piece of sand gets in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's interesting because we had this whole thing about Nylog a couple years back, I remember. Or maybe it's like four or five years back now. So you just put it on all of them. That's Nylog Blue. 
than are universal, I guess now. Yeah. One of the fellow business owners around here, because it's got a little snake on it, he calls it snake oil. He calls nylog snake oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I never thought of nylog as snake oil. I always thought it's like, honestly, like AC renew. I thought of that as snake oil, but <laughs> a lot of people are using it now. Uh, not to diminish what you did, because a lot of people, they tell them to use it. So it's not going to be snake oil, because the supply house shouldn't tell you if it's snake oil. Down.